I solemnly swear that I will well and faithfully support the Constitution of the United States. Laws of the United States applicable to Guam and the laws of Guam. And that I will conscientiously and impartially discharge my duties as the Attorney General of Guam. So help me God. And on behalf of the Judiciary of Guam, we just want to present to our colleague, former colleague, uh, retired Judge Elizabeth Barrett Anderson, a small lay in recognition of this momentous occasion. Before I, I start my speech, I was <clears throat> so intrigued by the governor's um, search of history, Tomas Anderson Calvo, and the person taking a picture of me right now is Tomas. <laughs> we, we continue to have Tomas Andersons. But Governor, thank you for that trivia, but I have to add one thing to you. It's kind of um, very, very fitting that when my mother was very ill and we were clearing out all her personal belongings, uh, she had a set of silver uh, forks and spoons, what do you call those, but flatware, flatware, silver. And my mother was um, completely paralyzed. She couldn't talk, she couldn't, she couldn't move. So I found the silverware and I turned it around and I read the design name of the silverware. True love. <laughs> True. <clears throat> I, 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 I asked my mother what it meant, but she couldn't respond. Uh, I said, are you serious, Mom? <laughs> that trivia and the island attorney and his prosecution of the racy book called True Love just struck a chord. Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much, Governor. Mr. Chief Justice, Justices and judges, uh, thank you so much. Um, and uh, Judge Gatewood, thank you so much for um, sponsoring this and, and allowing me to take this oath in what I call my home. I said when I became a judge that I came home, but now I've left home again, and I'm going over to the uh, executive branch. Governor Calvo and Lieutenant Governor uh, Tenorio, congratulations. I do look forward to the next four years. Speaker Wampat and uh, Vice Speaker Cruz, uh, my brother, I also look forward to working with my colleagues in the Guam Legislature. To the members of the Guam Bar here, I join you. I've paid my Guam Bar dues. And I paid it out of my pocket, not the AG's pocket. It came out of my pocket. To all the dignitaries here today, to my family and friends, I welcome you and thank you so much uh, for being here. I would like to take a few moments, however, to extend a very, very special greeting to my biggest campaign supporter, even though she did not vote for me. Hmm. Well, she actually couldn't vote for me because she's only six years old. Miss Sydney Tabayoyong, please stand up, Sydney, and her parents, Sean and Yolanda. I don't know if um, Grandma, I know Grandma's in the States. Is Grandpa here? No, he's Arnold and Norma Tabayoyong. Thank you, Sydney. I first met Sydney at the Fiesta restaurant in July when I had just announced that I was running. And I was at a, a table with Senator Carlotta Leon Guerrero, there's Carlotta, 
and Governor Joseph F. Atta. I was seeking my old boss's advice on running for elected attorney general. Sydney's father, Sean, told her to get up and go shake Joe Atta's hand. And she did that. She didn't know who Joetta was, but she respectfully came over and shook Carlotta's hand and shook my hand, almost like Meningi, right? Meningi, I'm sorry, Meningi. And I was so touched by this young lady having the guts to come over and shake the hands of these strangers. She didn't know who we were, but she abided by her parents' wishes. I stuck my hand in my purse and I pulled out a button, and it was my campaign button. I had not given a campaign button to anybody. She was the first. She was the first. And I instructed her that it was her button. Nobody else could wear it, neither her mother, nor father, nor grandparents. Nobody could wear that button. And that when somebody asked her where did she get that button, I instructed her to say, Auntie Judge gave me the button. Last Friday, ladies and gentlemen, up at Micronesian Mall Food Court, I met Sydney's grandmother. I didn't know her personally, and she came up to me and gave me well wishes, as I have received well wishes from so many people since the election. And she proceeded to tell me that she was the grandmother of the little girl I had given the button to. And she said, Judge, my granddaughter has worn that button every day, everywhere, even New Year's Day. And I was so pleased that Sydney wore my button. And your grandmother, uh, Sydney, also said, and when anybody asked, where did you get that button? You proudly said, my auntie judge gave it to me. Good girl, Sydney, good girl. Ladies and gentlemen, I invited Sydney here today to show her that wearing my button made me win this election. I'm certain of that. Maybe someday, Sydney, sitting here today, and maybe somewhat understanding what's going on, but may, maybe not fully understanding, maybe she'll run for public office someday. Maybe she'll run for governor. Maybe she'll run for attorney general. Or maybe she'll run to be a judge. Because ladies and gentlemen, these are dreams of little girls. And if you plant the dream early and you nurture it, they can come true. I was Sydney's age when my mother, Chong Barrett, attended Hastings College of Law. She was the first Chamorro woman to ever attend law school. My mother did not complete law school. I became the completion of her dream. But I remember as a little girl, Sydney's age, that my goodness, girls can be lawyers. But more importantly, I learned from my mother that women are born leaders. Sydney, thank you so much for wearing my button. And I hope you dream large today and that your dreams come true. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been 20 years since I left the Attorney General's office uh, as an appointed AG under Governor Joseph F. Atta's administration. And in that span of time, there have been seven Attorney Generals appointed and elected that have succeeded me and preceded me. I am your fourth elected attorney general since Congress authorized us to elect our local attorney general. I heard a statement during the campaign that the AG is a new public office and should be left to mature. Don't try to change it. Leave it alone. Let it mature. Public office, ladies and gentlemen, does not mature by itself. It has no natural DNA. It requires good statutory foundations and matures from judicial interpretation of those statutes. 
I am committed to building a mature Office of the Attorney General, both statutorily and administratively. I am committed to refocusing our work for crime victims and bringing much needed training to our island notaries. I am committed to an Attorney General's office that is open, transparent, accessible, and an AG office that is accountable. I hope to work towards a performance-based budget that will reflect that accountability. I am committed to representing the government agencies better by understanding the tremendous legal responsibilities that government employees face every day by giving good legal advice and standing by that advice. I am committed to defending the general fund from being the deep pocket for litigation. I am committed to fettering out the silent thief of graft and public corruption. I am committed to protecting all consumers of goods and services against false and misleading advertisement. I am committed to a strong and successful prosecution through strengthening prosecutorial practices and procedures. I am committed to building a cohesive criminal justice system through, st through strategic planning and cooperation among law enforcement entities in all branches of government. This is a difficult job to do well, but I have 180 plus employees of the Office of the Attorney General to do that good work with. And of course, I have Pauline and Jackie, Jackie there. I am eager to give the office my leadership and my experience. I hope to inspire good public service and respect for the public and for the work we do for the people of Guam. But most of all, ladies and gentlemen, I am committed to restoring the integrity to the office and role of the Attorney General of Guam once again. Most everything I've told you is deja vu for me. I've done it previously as the appointed Attorney General, and I hope I can be successful again. I'd like to end with a story that reflects on restoring the integrity of the role of the Attorney General. Towards the end of my first tenure as AG, I received a request from then Senator Mandolin Berdalio. She was requesting an opinion. I honestly don't remember what the subject was. But the subject was not as important as her very last sentence to me as Attorney General of Guam. She said to me that I will stand by the opinion of the Attorney General of Guam. I will stand by the opinion of the Attorney General of Guam. I had restored the integrity. I hope I can restore that once again. I have four years to try to do that again. I am up to the task that the people of Guam and the voters have given to me. So let me end it here and get started bright and early tomorrow morning. On behalf of my husband, Danny, of 35 years, add six more on top of that, the illegal part. <laughs> the illegal part was always more fun, right? <laughs> On behalf of my children, Scott, Tomas, Angela, and my future daughter-in-law, Stacy Goffigan, and her parents, my mother-in-law, Lillian, and my wonderful treasurer, my sister-in-law, Dolores, and her son, the Munya Boys. I don't know if they're all here, but it's Stephen, David, Danny, Dominic, and Darren, the Barretts and the Andersons. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming this afternoon. I look forward to doing the work bright and early at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Thank you very, very much.